Welcome to the sixth section of the Building Databases with Redis video course. In the previous section, we finally finished exploring all the data types and queries related to data manipulation in Redis. In the second section, we started discussing administration tasks and learned basic possibilities and commands that Redis DBMS offers to system administrators. This section continues to examine the administrative part of Redis, although it also touches topics that are interesting to developers. Many of these questions are connected to scaling and high availability, involve some coding, especially when talking about horizontal partitioning. So, let's start the first video of the section in which we are going to discuss master-slave replication. First of all, Let's get clear about what scalability is. Scalability is a property of a database to handle a growing amount of queries and or storage. Practically, it means that a scalable system can be adjusted to fit growing demands in queries load or storage. Master-slave replication is one of the ways to achieve scalability. The principle is very simple. You have at least two Redis servers, one of them is a master, and others are slaves. All servers store the same copy of data through all databases. The difference between these kinds of servers is that slaves are read-only and the master accepts reads and writes. That means that such nodes tab is good when you have larger number of reads than writes. When data update happens on master, it eventually affects slaves so all writes to master are distributed over slave Redis instances. That's about theory, and now we are ready to get closer to practice. In the real world, you usually set up masters and slaves all on different machines with separate storage devices. One of the advantages of the master-slave replication is that when one of your instances becomes corrupted, for example because of hard disk corruption, your data remains safe as a copy exists on other instances. For our experiments, we will run all Redis instances on one machine. After all, we are not doing production system right now. So, first of all, we have to start a fresh Redis instance, which we will use as a master instance. For that, we type redis server hyphen hyphen port 6379 hyphen hyphen db file name db1.rdb, which starts Redis server for us. Next, let's raise up another instance, which we are going to use as a slave. For that, we type redis server hyphen hyphen port 6380 hyphen hyphen db file name db2.rdb. Now, let's connect sequentially to both of the servers and enter keys asterisk command in order to check that both databases are empty. At this point, we are ready to make the second Redis instance to be a slave of the first one. This is done easily with the slave of command. This command accepts two arguments, host and port of the server, for which current instance is going to be a slave. Let's enter slave of localhost 6379 in order to create a master slave cluster. The server replies with OK, which means the operation has finished successfully. If we move back to the first Redis instance tab, we can see that the process of accepting slave instance is accurately logged. Now it's time to see how the stuff works. Let's move to the client tab, connect to the master instance and insert a new string into database by typing set master colon key value. Check the key with get command. Now let's close our connection to master with quit command and connect to slave instance. If we type get master colon key, you can see that we receive value, though this key was not set on this instance. That is how master slave mechanism works. Although if you type, for example, set slave colon key value in order to update data directly on slave, that slave will answer you with an error. And finally, if you have to break the master-slave connection between servers, you can use the same slave-off command 
with two constant strings no one as parameters. Let's try it and type slave of no one while connected to slave and it answers with OK. At the same time, the operation is logged in master instance terminal. That's all for master slave replication on Redis. As we have seen through this video, it is extremely easy to set up master slave mechanism and receive a scalable system. While having its advantages, like simplicity, data security, and scalability over read queries, master slave mechanism duplicates the usage of data storage and does not allow us to scale that storage. In contrast, storage scaling becomes efficient when we are talking about horizontal replication, and that is what we are going to discuss in the next video.